us when it was in New York. Hi, everybody. We were having a discussion about it's hot in here. <laughs> anyway, bear with me. I forgot my iPad. So um, I'm going to try to read whatever the Lord gave me off my phone. And, um, but anyway, Stella, that's awesome that you took the head of the snake off. That's what we're called to do. How apropos for the message that I have tonight. We're going to start a, a series on inner healing and deliverance. And, um, you know, tonight it's more going to be, going to be, you know, more of uh, beginners, but we're going to get into in the following weeks, um, Jezebel, we're going to address, um, uh, you know, Python, uh, Ishtar, um, we're going to just deal with a lot of different things that we haven't in a while and um, that we need to be aware of if you're not already aware of. So I wrote down certain things during worship. Good thing I did that <laughs> because I, don't, I can't see anything here. Um, tonight, uh, I just wanted to talk a bit about our, our authority. And I know a lot of us know this, but, you know, we have to hear things over and over and over and over again to really get it, right? I've been teaching this a long time, and I still get excited, and I still learn so much from the word and, and God wants to um, commission us again uh, today and, and really understanding our authority. So I'm going to just pray. So Lord, we just thank you that you've given us power to tread on scorpions and serpents. Father, we thank you that, that we are one with you and there is power in your name and there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that you've given us dominion over all the works of the enemy, over our authority, over all the works of the enemy. But, Lord, more importantly, that we're one with you and that we can keep our eyes fixed like flint on you, O oh God. So, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for the word that will be released today. I take authority over any contrary spirit. We bind every religious spirit, every spirit of witchcraft. Father, we take authority over all distractions and we loose your shalom, and we lose the spirit of peace in this house. And, Father, we just thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, you know, like I said a couple of weeks ago, you've heard it from other people. You know, obviously we're at war. When you look at just what's happening in our country, there's a spiritual war going on, right? I mean, it's good versus evil. That's just the bottom line. And, um, you know, I, I, this isn't going to be a political message, but, you know, when, when the government starts crossing lines and, and getting into church stuff about redefining marriage, redefining boys and girls, redefining, you know, um, stuff that they shouldn't, they're messing with the church. And the church has to speak up and say, not on our watch. Because God created man and woman to be married. Not the government. God, it's in the word, right? So, th so there's warfare that's going on. So we're at war. And, it, it, and I know that for those of you who, who've been here a long time, you, you all know this stuff. So this isn't anything new. But if any time we have to really get right with God is now. You know, I was thinking, like during worship, I was just thinking about, you know, the different spirits that we want to address but you know what the biggest issue is self that's a god and we have bowed long enough to self where self is always put before god and that has to go because that really will hinder us i mean we can go through the motions and be in church and do our thing but if you're going to put you or me before god that's a problem and um so god wants everything to get uncovered and he wants everything to be um what do you call that? Um, transparent. And um, so we're going to deal with generational curses. We're going to deal with the evil altars in our families, in our family lines. And, um, you know, we're going to deal with a lot of stuff in the next coming weeks. So it's going to be good. And, you know, and based on, you know, especially in the season that we're in, and I'm not just talking about Halloween, I'm just talking about the season that we're in, we have to really get back into our prayer and fasting and our, 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 our seeking the Lord. And not that we're not doing it, but I mean, if you're not, you, you have to do it, right? So we're at war. So 
I, I had changed my message, and that I forgot at home. <laughs> I, I can't believe I forgot it. But anyway, so uh, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, you know, we know the scripture where it says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And so God has given us many strategies to overthrow the works of the enemy, right? And so, of course, we know it's the word. It's the power of the blood. It's understanding worship, right? We, we know that we know these things in that um, the thief in the Bible, in John 10.10, 10, it says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I have come to give you life, what? That life more abundantly, right? So when you look up some of the words, you know, it's pretty obvious. Steal is klepto. It means to take away to, by stealth. Um, to kill means to blow smoke and to slaughter, and destroy means to render useless and to ruin punishment, all right? And so that's the enemy's game plan. He wants to destroy us. He wants to hinder us. He doesn't care if you're religious. He doesn't care if you go to church 22 times a week. He just wants you to be bound. He doesn't want you to be free. He doesn't want you to learn to submit. He doesn't want you to be open to even healthy authority in your life to speak into your life, right? And he wants us to, to, to recognize that God loves us so much and he wants us free. So, so there are things that we all have to recognize that might need correction, right? And so, but he says, but Jesus came to give you that life more abundantly, right? To give you that, how, how does it word? The, um, the word, uh, look, that life is Zoe, and it means the state of one who is possessed of vitality, absolute fullness of life, blessed, having vital power in itself, and exerting the same upon your soul. Abundantly means exceeding, surpassing, superior, the sense of beyond, super abundant. That's what God wants for us. But, but, but God is saying, listen, there could be hindrances that we have in our life, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Paul warns us not to be ignorant of the devil's strategies or devices, all right? And so um, there, there is a, you know, there's spiritual warfare, and, and spiritual warfare is basically, you know, taking a stand against good and evil, and you know, you hear so many people say that we're not to war. Well, that's a bunch of baloney because there's a lot in the scripture about warring, okay? Paul wrote most of the epistle, most of the New Testament, and he, was in, he, he discussed warfare, amen? But it's not that we have our focus on, on the devil. You know, like if you're, you're a police officer here, if you're in the army, you have to be aware of the tactics of the enemy, but he's not my focus. My focus is I'm going to worship. I'm going to praise. Get your spirit man strong. See, that's the thing. It's not just that, yeah, that we're carnal and we just go through the motions and we're always crying. We're always sad and we're always depressed. No, we have to shat, like snap out of it. And just say, okay, Lord, what is my problem? Why do I keep going back? Why am I circling around over and over, going through this over and over and over again and not getting any help or not shifting? That's something that we all have to look at and discuss in our lives, right? And so, um, hold on a minute, my phone just, okay, so. I wanted to read you a couple of scriptures, all right? In Colossians 1.13, in the Amplified, it says, The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness, and he's transferred us into the kingdom of, his, of the Son of his love, right? And in the New Living, it says, For he rescued us, love this, from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, we know that we were from victory. We're not trying to get it. We have been rescued. We have been delivered. And yet, why do we have all these issues at times? It's because we've got our soul. We have to get our soul healed. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Colossians 2.15 says, Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, and he made an open show of them, triumphing over them. Right? And so... Um, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to read you some scriptures about how blessed we are and the authority we have, all right? So we're, we're not warring from defeat. In um, 2 Timothy 2.3, Paul tells his spiritual son, Timothy, to be a good soldier and to wage good war warfare. So I'm going to read you 1 Timothy 6.12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. 
Lay hold of eternal life to which you were summoned, for which you confess the good confession of faith before many witnesses. And then I just, uh, two more. It said, there were so many good scriptures. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, thank you. Now I can see. In 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert, cautious at all times, because the enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not letting him devour me. And, um, you know, and that's his goal. And Jesus in 1 John 3, 8 in the Amplified in part 2 says, The reason the Son of God was made manifest or visible was to undo, destroy, loosen, and dissolve the works of the devil. So we know that, that God, Jesus came to set us free. And so God is saying to us, I want you to get a reality of my amazing love that I have for each and every one of us. That's what I, when we were worshiping, I heard him say, he says, I want my people in this season more than ever to have a reality of my goodness and my amazing love for, for each and every one. Because, see, when we're in his presence, that's where we get the freedom, right? But then there's things that we have to then renounce and repent because at times we just get stuck, right? And so... You know, we, we, we integrate here inner healing and deliverance because it's not just demons. They're not that good. It's inner healing. It's, it's wounds. It's trauma. There's stuff from our past that can hinder us from moving forward, and that's the thing that we want to address. And so my thing is, Lord, I just want to surrender to you. Show me my heart. Show me issues. and show. There have been stuff just recently that the Lord showed me and um, that I have really prayed and it was simple. It was just simple that he just showed me something, and, and I've noticed such a difference in me. See, it's that simple. God is not complicated. You know, when he shows you something, you address it, you deal with it, and then you cut your losses and you move on. And we'll talk about that in a minute because the enemy wants us to rehearse our stuff over and over and over again. I know you've heard that, but we're going to hear it again tonight. And so in Acts 10.38 in the Amplified, it says how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength, ability, and power, and how he went about doing good, and in particular, curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. And that's the thing. God's saying, listen, I'm giving you all authority and power so that you're no longer harassed. You're going to cut the head of the enemy off, and you're going to kick his sorry behind and not allow him to, to keep you in bondage. If Jesus, what's the point of Jesus dying on a cross if, if, we're not, if we're not going to walk in freedom? It's not that we're not going to have issues that we address. It's just that it's like, okay, Lord. You know, I remember years ago the Lord saying to me, stop looking at everyone else. Look at yourself and look and address the issues that I'm showing you about you and, and so that you can move on. You know, it's so easy for us to blame people. And say, yeah, but you don't understand why. It's not that that doesn't affect us in any way. But if we keep looking back, remember Saul, Saul what's his name? Uh, Lot's wife. Thank you. <laughs> I'm saying Saul's wife. Lot's wife. Um, she kept looking back. It, it causes a hardness of the heart. It causes us to have a stony heart. And that's the thing. And that, the enemy knows the strategy. And, you know, you can say, but you don't know, and, and I don't know. And you don't know my story, and I don't know your story. But I know that Jesus said that he wants us to get off that mountain, to stop going around that mountain. He says that in Deuteronomy over and over. We have to stop. But where is it? What, what could have caused that hardness of heart? What could have caused that, that defeat or that thing that has caused you to get stuck, right? And that's the thing that we have to look at. And so... I know, you know, I know that the Lord is more than happy to show me uh, any issues of my life because he loves us too much to let us stay where we're at. So in, it, it's in Isaiah 61, Luke 4, 18 and 19. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Messiah, because he's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Amen. See, the baby knows. <laughs> he has sent me to announce release. Amen. Amen. Pardon and forgive. That's how we need to be acting in church. Pardon, forgiveness to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. To set free those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed by tragedy. 
to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the favor of God abound greatly. See, that's who he is. And so Jesus doesn't want us staying in a funky place where we're not getting freedom. I remember years ago, you know, uh, the pastor said he spoke about um, the, John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come to give you that life more abundantly. And I thought, well, I'm going to church, and I'm doing, I'm preaching, you know, we're in, going to prisons, and we're in Broadway and 44th, you know, ministering to people. But I said, I'm not having an abundant life. I don't feel like I'm having an abundant life. But see, I never understood inner healing and deliverance. I didn't know that Jesus, you know, the, I knew the Bible said Jesus came to set the captives free, but I didn't know how to get free. And then I didn't know that I was a captive until I knew that I wasn't abundantly free. And so, you know, then the Lord started showing me stuff. And, and that's the beauty of it. We never arrive. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you're saved. Jesus is always looking to show us something. Amen. But with his love and his mercy, because there's always something that he shows you. Even, even how many of us are saved forever, and then we're reading the Bible, and it's like, oh, my God. You're seeing, it's like you saw something for the first time because it gives you a different revelation about something. That's the beauty of the revelation of the word of God because he's, he, Jesus is the word. He's alive. And he wants to show us this. And listen, there's some here that are dealing with shame. And, and you feel like you blew it. You made a mistake. But the Lord is saying to you, he's forgiven you. You have to forgive yourself. Someone online, you may be thinking that. God wants to set you free from that. Because, see, the enemy likes torment. And that's where, again, you don't allow the enemy to torment you. So you, I, you've heard me speak on this before, but some of you may not. In Mark chapter 5... Um, I want to just go there. I think I gave it to Reyes. Mark 5, 1 through 8. So let me just find it. Mark chapter 5. And this is about the, the, the demoniac. And it says here that they came to the other side, to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. And a man lived in the tombs, and no one could... No one could bind him anymore, not even with chains, for he had been bound with shackles for the feet and with chains, and he tore apart the chains and broke the shackles in pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue and tame him. Night and day, he was constantly screaming and shrieking among the tombs on the mountains and cutting himself with sharp stones. So that's a picture of someone who's tormented, all right? It says here, when he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. When you look up the word tomb, now I looked it up, and I don't know. It, mean, it's, um, it means remembrance, to recall, to return to one's mind. But I don't know if it was on my other notes. I looked up all this stuff here. Hold on a second. Yes, it means memorial to perpetuate the memory of a thing, memory recall, to return to one's mind, to be mindful of, to chew, to devour, and to consume. That's what that word tomb means. So the maniac of Gadaria, all right, he was tormented. He was in the tombs. It wasn't just like a cave that he was hiding out. He was rehearsing over and over and over again the trauma that occurred in his life. It says that nobody was able to really deal with him. It says day and night he was screaming. He was a cutter. He was cutting himself. There are people here watching. You know, I, I used to do that years ago. You're a cutter. You were cutting yourself. It's because of the inward pain that you have. And so God wants to set you free. But that's a picture here. He was dwelling. That word dwelling means to, uh, to have residence. Divine powers, influences are said to dwell in the soul, to pervade. So he was, he was in this place of despair. And then when he saw Jesus, he cried out. And he said, you know, screaming with a loud voice, what business do we have in common with each other, Jesus? See, when, you're in a, when you're, your soul is so wounded... You're, you're more in common with the enemy, not with Jesus. He says, what, what do we have in common with you? See, Jesus wants to heal our hearts and heal our soul. And so, and so it was an unclean spirit. So Jesus, you know, brought him freedom. And it was beautiful. When we went to see, um, uh, what's that place in Lancaster? Um, 
sight and sound. That part of the play, I don't know if you all remember that, when, when you saw the manic, maniac, maniac, the guy that you know, was crazy, and he was in his right mind, now he's with his family. I mean, it just, it just broke your heart. I mean, it was like in a good way, you were just weeping because you saw the torment that he was in. He wasn't able to have a normal family life. He wasn't able to be home with his family. You know, he wasn't able to interact with people. People didn't want to be around him. You know, he, it's that rejection causing spirit where you want people to be near you, but you're causing people to repel you. Right? And it's like, why, why are people treating me that way? Well, there's something in you that has an expectation to be rejected. And so you push people away in, indirectly. Right? I could just picture what this man was going through. And so, but Jesus came and he saw Jesus, but the spirits in him. See, what happens is you get open doors. We'll talk about open doors, but there were open doors. And so that open door of regret, of always looking to your past, of not forgiving, of not forgiving yourself, that's an open door for you to be oppressed. And so Jesus is saying, listen. I want you to know that I'm here. I came to set you free. You don't have to keep rehearsing that, but you need to allow me to bring healing to your soul, to your wounds. And it doesn't have to be so traumatic, but it can be. It can be if you're, if you're always in a place of rebellion, if you're always in a place of disobedience or defiance or whatever. What's the root? See, that's the thing. It's like, Lord, show me. Sometimes we know. Other times we're not aware. What is my root? What's the problem why I keep acting this way? Why, like you may have been hurt by authority figures, and you're afraid of authority figures, or, or you'll blame them and say, they don't like me. I, I'm not going to go near them. Or, you know, whatever it is, you know? Th these are things that you have to say, why do I act that way? Why am I afraid of authority figures? Why am I afraid of, you know, uh, certain people you know, coming near me. Why, you know, wh what is the why behind it? So the Lord is saying today, deal with it. We can't keep going around that mountain. We can't allow self-pity. Woe is me. Everything happens to me. Come on. We all have stuff that's, hap that's happened to us, but we have to make a choice and just allow ourselves to get into the presence of the Lord for our healing. And then the Lord gives us divine strategies, and then we have people that we connect with that help us to get and to move forward. That's why we need each other. That's why, you know, God, you know, in Hebrews it says, don't forsake the fellowship of one another. We need, we need that corporate anointing. We need to be with people to help, you know, when you're down and the other ones around you, you know, dragging you forward. Sometimes they're just dragging you, <laughs> pulling you by the hair, just getting you to move forward. But that's okay. We all need it. We all need it. I don't care who we are. There are days I don't feel like being here either. It's not just you. So, you know, but it's like, thank God for God and thank God for his grace. You know, in 5785, one of the things that the focus of, of the year 5785 is deliverance, is face-to-face, -face, is intercession, is prayer, you know, allowing the Lord to love you. But it's also his grace where it says in Zechariah that we will speak to that mountain and it will become a mere molehill, and we will shout grace, grace to it. What's the mountain in your life that seems so, so enormous and so huge that, that you don't know how you're going to overcome? You don't know how you're going to get through that thing. It's like, well, Lord, I'm going to speak to that thing and command it to become a mere molehill. Listen, we have that authority. There's power in our words. When we decree that thing, the Bible says in Job, it shall be established unto us. We have so many testimonies and miracles of things that have shifted just as a result of us taking a stand, but of, of decreeing that thing, of, 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 of just allowing the Lord to give you revelation and strategy of the word of God in your life. Amen? So I'm just so grateful that I don't have to keep rehearsing things that have happened. And, and like even, you know, when, when the enemy, and he loves to keep bringing it to your remembrance, but it's up to us to say no. I, no, how many times do I have to keep repeating this thing? How many times do I have to keep rehearsing this thing? No, I'm not going there in Jesus' name. You can, you can start worshiping. You can start decreeing the word. Listen, he's not, the devil's not creative. He's going to do the same thing over and over to all of us. And it's up to us to reject the plans and the strategies of the, of the enemy, to reject that arrow that's thrown, that's shot out at us. Amen? And so... 
We have to discern the atmosphere. One of the things that the Lord was speaking to me during worship, he said, see, as we, as we allow our soul to get healed, um, you know, the whole, one of the key things is Holy Spirit wants us to have a discerning spirit. He wants us to discern and he wants us to, to be able to decipher and discern and sense and feel what's happening in the realm of the spirit. What's happening where, where you work? What's happening, um, you know, and, and when you're going to shop, right? What, what are you sensing? What are you picking up? Because it's not just about us. We're running into the store to go shopping. But the Lord is saying, listen, I want your spirit man so clean and delivered that you can identify and look at that thing. You can recognize when there is a plot that the enemy has it to cause terrorism. You can discern or hear um, about somebody who, um, you know, had, may have had a heart attack and you can go there and help them. You can discern a demon manifesting. You know, a lot of times when you're around people, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, you just meet a person, you know, that, like, yikes, they don't like you and you really, like, you know, stay away from me. That's, that's a spiritual battle. They're, that thing in him and that individual is discerning a spirit in you and vice versa. But yet God's saying, don't run. Stella didn't run from that stinking snake. She cut its head off. So the thing is, the Lord is saying to us, don't run from that. Speak life into that person. Be that light that can help them. Now, I know it's easier said than done because sometimes you want to slap the person. But, but, you know, that's where God is. He's dealing with all of us in our flesh to try to walk more in love and to be kinder when someone's being nasty to you. But, but that person is really crying out. The person's really saying, I need help. But they don't know that they need help. They want help. They want, they want the love of God. And we have the light of God in us. We have the love of God in us that people need. Amen? Galatians 5 and 19 and 21 in New Living, it says, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality. Hey, you didn't print it all out. Um, hold on a second. I want to read it to you out of the New Living Translation. Um, let's see here. Note to self, don't ever forget your iPad. Um, all right, let me just look it up. So anyway, don't, you know, the, the works of the flesh, it's, it's uh, jealousy, it's, let me just look it up here. It's 519, okay, good thing I have my Bible with me. All right, okay. Now, the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. There are sexual immorality, impurity, sensu sensuality, Total irresponsibility, wow, that's a big one. Lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissension, factions that promotes heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like this. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's serious. Now, I don't mean like if you have a, a you know, once in a while you, you fall into that. I'm just talking about where this is something, the key word here is practice. Now, the practice of the sinful nature, okay? It says, but the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such thing there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with its passions and its appetite. So that's something, it's a discipline. That's something that we have to do. That's not all spirits. That's, that's flesh. Flesh is, is you know, you got to work on it. Demons are easy to cast out. Flesh, flesh is a little more challenging, right? So anyway, so God is saying to us, okay, listen, y'all heard this many times. Look again. Where are you at in this? We all have to do this. And, and we have to choose to forgive. So what, what could be some of the open doors, all right, that, that we can have here? Um, let's see here. I had that somewhere. Um, so we know that, like I spoke about the guy in the tombs, trauma, right? 
um, prolonged season of sin is an open door. If like, you blow it once or twice, that's not going to be a major open door. But, but prolonged um, season of sin is an open door, okay? Um, and then we'll talk about how to close it. Generational curses, they have a bloodline right. And, you know, I know a lot of people say, well, I don't believe that. Well, hey, listen, <laughs> you got the, the fruit of it. We, we have dealt with so many people that have gotten so free. And it's, I'm, I'm just going to say, it's a, spirit, it's a religious spirit that wants to say that we can't have any of this stuff. Listen, when you're born again, your spirit is automatically one with Christ, not your soul. So, but that, I mean, if that were the case, why aren't we all acting like Jesus? So, um, anyway. So we have prolonged season of sin, generational curses, and, and we'll go through this. Tonight I wasn't going to take the time to really go into it because I didn't have enough time. So it's, it's a spirit, generational curse for those who might not know. It's a spirit that's passed from one generation to the other. You can look up Exodus 20, verse 5. And so, um, you know, we, we are aware of, of deception. The Bible says that Satan is the father of lies. The enemy of our soul works to deceive us, right? And so what are some of the other things where, um, what are like being really overly critical, always judgmental, gossip, oh my Lord, uh, having abusive parents, right? Um, even little kids, you know, like you see like how kids can be really mean to each other and you really feel so bad when you see that. But yet that's an open door that can hurt these kids' hearts that, that can need healing. And you can walk children through. In the end of January, we're going to have Clancy Cunningham come, and she's from Gloria Zion, and she wrote a book on, on teaching children how to hear the voice of the Lord. And, and we're having her in here to train to teach parents as well, and, um, but uh, for our teachers, but for these kids to learn, she starts from the age of five on up, how to hear the voice of the Lord. Listen, the enemy is trying to teach them all this other nonsense in the school system. But here, she really does a fabulous job with colors and animals. And, and I've had these kids prophesy over me before little three. Actually, they were three and four-year-olds. And I, I was amazed, my husband and I, at what they, you know, what they told us. I mean, it was really awesome. So, um, but, you know, th th you can have an open door in utero when your mom, like if your mom didn't want you uh, because of her circumstance, you know, financial issues there can be a spirit of rejection that can enter in. So there's different ways that you can have an open door. And again, we will go all through this, right? And we've done this many times about teaching about um, even soul ties, right? Is when your soul is knit together with another person. How do you get a soul tie? It could be sexually or through a, like someone, a manipulative, very overbearing, Jezebelic-like, controlling person. All right? So the other thing is uh, an inner vow, right? It, a vow that binds you to a thing. It's a declaration that you will perform a duty of some kind. It's, or it's a vow like, you know, you can also say, well, I will never do this or I will never let a person get close to me. No one will ever hurt me again. These are things that we say for self-protection when God is saying, listen, that's an open door. I want to protect you. I want to be your one that you run to. But, you know, again, God starts teaching us and helping us along the way to um, understand that, that he wants us free from these things. These are all the things that, that you know, um, hurt our soul. The other thing is, again, people are so deceived. Oh, my gosh. And, and part of the problem is you don't read, people don't read their Bible. I'm not saying you. People don't read their Bible. Well, how do you know the truth if you don't know what's in the Word? And so, therefore, it's easy to be deceived. You, you see people out there in the world, some of the dumb things that they're saying. Oh, my gosh. There was a segment on, online not, uh, with Madeline O'Hare, the one, the atheist, the one that, pr listen, one person, because of her anger and her getting hurt, took a stand and fought and got prayer taken out of school. One person. I heard her being interviewed. She was talking out of her... You know what? <laughs> I'm sitting there. She hadn't. I, I'm like, oh, my God, I want to slap her. Everything she was saying, it wasn't even scriptural. And she's quoting the Bible, which half is what the devil does. He'll quote half the Bible and not quote the rest of the Bible where it would make sense. And 
she said that like she was proud of how when she gives her speeches because I didn't know anything about it I just caught this and she uses like the four letter word like she said she was proud of that and how she felt like she needed to to say that and like, I'm sitting there thinking this lady was crazy now I believe her son is now born again but when, see this is what I'm saying and so she one person we have a remnant here we had 350 or 400,000 that was in D.C. It's more than one or two that are standing and taking a stand for a righteous cause. Amen. That was one person that fought it and got a group of people around her to get prayer out of the school. Well, that's what we need all of us to rise up and take a stand and get prayer back in the school system and get prayer back in the, in the, in the government. I mean, can you, but that was, the church was asleep. Well, we can't, church and, you know, state has to be separate. That's baloney. That's not even scriptural. That was the Johnson Amendment. And so that's what this one woman did. But I'm saying, I'm like thinking about it. I'm thinking, how deceived. I'm like speaking to them. I'm thinking, that's not even the scripture. That was so ridiculous. But see, she got away with it. Deception. That's, a, that's one of the things in Matthew 24, one of the first things it says that the people in end times will be deceived. Well, I don't want to be deceived. And that's why, again, we have to have the intimate walk with Holy Spirit. So we want to, I forgive her, <laughs> Madeline. And um, so deception, so soul ties, unhealthy soul ties, sexual ties, you have you know, or like I said, I just told you that. Manipulation, inner vows, right? And then, you know, because the scripture says, let your yes be yes and you know me no. Don't, don't say yes to things that you're not going to even follow through with, too. That's a whole other side of this. But listen to James 5.12 in the message. It says, and since you know that he cares, let your language show it. Don't add words like I swear to God or to your own words. Don't show your impatience by concocting oaths to hurry up God. Just say yes or no. Just say what is true. That way your language can't be used against you. So let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't add to it. Don't embellish. Don't gossip. Don't lie. Don't add to things. All right? So it's an open door. And so, you know, again, I just, I, I, you know, we have to just allow Holy Spirit to bring healing. And, um, you know, even to our thought life, what you focus on is what you become, right? And so are you meditating on the word? Are you focusing on the word? Or are you watching movies? Are you watching social media? Are you listening to all the nonsense out there? What are you focusing on? And so, like, if you're battling with fear, are you focusing on fearful situations? Are you focusing on your past? Are you focusing on situations or trauma that happened? You know, again, it's, it, it's what we have to do in order to get free. Um, so, so what I put here, how do you know that you're struggling with demonic oppression? What are, what are some of the signs? Well, when you keep hitting a wall, when you're trying to get free, and you know that, like, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been doing everything I know, but I keep struggling with this one thing. That could be a spirit, and you need deliverance. It's easy. Demons are easy. All right? I'm, I'm, listen, if I feel like I have something, I have gone to the office Easter, right? And I have gone in and asked you and Cindy. I said, look me in the eye and cast this thing out of me. <laughs> and she looked at me. I said, just do it because I was really struggling with depression and I couldn't get free I was doing everything I knew to do and I said this is darn spirit so I went and they did they looked me in the eye took authority over the thing and got set free hey why struggle with something you know I hear people well Christian can't have a demon well we cast enough of out of them uh, enough demons out of people <laughs> like thousands we met with so you're talking to the wrong person here but I got set free Hallelujah. Why stay with something that you don't need to stay with? So that religious devil will tell you what I'm saying is a bunch of baloney. Anyway, so you keep hitting a wall or you keep practicing sin and you can't seem to stop. I keep, pro you keep promising, I'll never do it again, I'll never do it again, then the next day you're doing it. All right, family patterns, there's constant unexplainable sickness. If there's a constant, you know how like you're with people and they're constantly getting sick, that could be a demon. It could be an open door through trauma. 
all right? Uh, like hearing voices, or if you're obsessed, you know, obsession and compulsions are wrote here. Uh, constantly feeling bad about yourself, wanting to beat yourself up, wanting to cut, cut yourself, a cutter, all right? Mental distress, you know, feeling traumatized all the time. You know, you know, you're here on earth, but you're living like you're in hell. You know, that, that could be something. And so you have to pray and ask the Lord, what is the legal right? Why am I struggling like that? See, God wants us to dialogue with him. He wants us to ask him, what is the reason here? Now, you can make appointments and come in for ministry, but the Lord wants to show us too. And, and he's more than happy to do it because he loves us too much to let us stay where we're at. So, um, so with that, you can stand. And for those of you that are here a long time, I mean, you know, what do we say we have to do? We have to repent. We forgive. We renounce. We refuse what the enemy is saying. But you know what? That's all well and good. But if you're not going to do your part, if you're not going to meditate on the word, if you're not going to get before the Lord, they're just prayers. You know, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. And it's like, Lord, show me my heart. Lord, I repent for, for having self on the throne. I repent for the open door of, of, of bitterness or unforgiveness. I repent, Lord, for judging my parents and for not um, forgiving them or, you know, whatever it is, we'll, we'll, go, we'll walk through that. But tonight I just wanted to, again, I know a lot of you have heard this, but a lot have not. I, I, come, against, I come against so many people that say to me, I've never been taught this stuff. Okay, and we have a lot of people that watch online, and but I, I was going over all this again, and I just think it was so apropos that Stella kills us two snakes, one back there and one out there. So on the entrance and the exit, right? <laughs> and so, what is the Lord saying to us? And and you know what's another big thing too that we have to address all the distractions. I'm telling you, when I, I mean, I am grateful for the phone. I'm grateful that we can look stuff up on Google. But it was just so much easier when we didn't have all these distractions with the phone and the this and the that. And, oh, you know, I'm getting these things, that, you know, and emails about the mortgage. Will you just send me a hard copy of stuff? I hate looking up all this stuff on the computer. But it's just so much distraction. And that's another plot of the enemy. We don't sit still long enough. We don't just wait before the Lord. That's the problem. Then we want to run to everybody else for a word. And listen, I love getting a word, right? But, but God is saying right now, he wants us to have that privilege of panim, you know, face to face, of just getting with him. Those who seek me will find me. You know, draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you. Lord, is there any way that my heart has been rebellious? Lord, is there any way in my heart where I have been walking in defeat, where I've been just walking in regret? Lord, is there anything in my heart that I've been holding all against you? Is there anything in my heart? Show me. And that's the beauty of his amazing love for us. He said, I love you too much to let you stay where you're at. I just want you to get free. And, you know, it's not complicated. I've seen people just cry out to God and just weep before him and just get before him. And, I mean, they come out different. There's witchcraft that we have to deal with, even like in your past that I didn't even bring up. Um, like if, even if you innocently play with Ouija boards, had your palms read, fortune tellers. You have to renounce that stuff. The devil's a legalist. And that is an open door that has to be renounced because that is a spirit that needs, you need to get set free from. So I'm going to pray, okay? And we, have, we can pray with you today. And we also have teams that you can make appointments because some of this stuff that you've gone through, you may have to make an appointment where we spend a little time and minister inner healing and deliverance to you. But again, God doesn't want us staying with our stuff. And even right now, as I, I'm going to just pray, but you can just say to the Lord, some of you may know what you need to renounce and repent of. Or may, maybe not. Or maybe you're good. Maybe you, you, you're good. God's dealt with you and you're good. Well, amen. God bless you. But, um, you know, I just know even trauma, the church has been through trauma. 
You know, we've been through stuff. And we've all, we've gone through grieving. There's grieving through relationship loss. There's grieving through death. There's all different forms of, you know, of grieving. And, and, and we all have had a choice to want to stay there, to keep rehearsing everything, or to cut your losses and move on. But by that, I don't mean just being like callous. I mean, allowing the Holy Spirit to heal our hearts, right? I mean, you know, I had a choice. I mean, part of me was really mad at him. Then the other part of me was like, okay, he's good. Then, then it was, you know, back and forth. And it's like, no, I'm not staying here. Mm -mm. And I'm not going to have an open door to the enemy of resentment and bitterness and unforgiveness. I'm not doing that. Because why? Because then it will torment me. He's, he's in glory. You know, so I'm going to pray. So, Lord, we, I just thank you so much that you came to set us free. Lord, I thank you that you love us so much and you want to show us our heart. Lord, reveal to us where there's been callousness in our hearts, where we've had a hard heart, a stony heart, that has gotten hard because we've even been disappointed with you. Or we say, what's the point? And we pull back. And listen, that's a strategy of the enemy is for you to pull back. I'm telling you right now, there are those of you that are watching, you have pulled back. And the Holy Spirit is saying, don't do it. Keep, just, cut, just come back to me, the Lord is saying. Don't pull back. Because it's going to be very tough for you in the future for what's, you know, what's coming. That's the word of the Lord for somebody. Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you're so patient with us. And Lord, we do repent. And you can pray your own prayer, but you can repent for whoever you need to repent for. But Lord, we do repent for disappointment and shame and anger and uh, rage, lying, gossiping, for works of the flesh. Father, for ways that we just so pulled away and we haven't even been one with you. Father, it's our desire to be one with you. Lord, we, I just speak to that spirit of trauma. And Lord, I just, I just take authority over it. I bind it and render it ineffective and powerless now. But Lord, where that trauma has taken a root in our hearts to try to get us to shut down and not have a love, a, a love encounter with God. Father, I just break off that self-protection. And Lord, I just thank you that you are releasing your love encounters that you, you've always wanted to. But Lord, where we have placed that wall around us, that, that thing to protect us, Father, we, well, Lord, I, I know I'm saying it for myself, but Lord, I command it to fall to the ground, to be shattered in Jesus' name. We cut the head of the enemy off. We cut the head of the enemy off of deception, of fear of man, of lying, of, of poverty. That poverty mindset, that spirit, soul, and body. Lord, your word says, beloved, I wish above all that your spirit, man, you, that your spirit and your soul prosper. Spirit, soul, and body prosper above all else. Lord, we will not tolerate, we will not accept defeat. You came to give us abundant life. So, Father, we say yes to abundance. Forgive us where we have settled for common. Forgive us where we have just settled for defeat. Forgive us, Lord. And we, we release any anger and disappointment to you. And we, we thank you, Father, for bringing healing into our hearts this night. And Lord, I'm just going to, Lord, I just thank you for the, the blood of Jesus. I thank you for your precious blood that cleanses us, that Jesus, your death was not in vain. We sang about it today. Your death was not in vain, and you came to set the captives free. You spoiled principalities and powers, and you made an open show with them, Father. So, God, I just thank you. I thank you for freedom. It is for freedom that you have set us free, O oh God. Lord, forgive us for where 
we've been addicted to things. Forgive us for idolatry in our lives. And I thank you, Father God, that you're, you're getting us on that right path. The wind of your spirit is just blowing us forward. And you're pushing us into that place because you're not willing to let us stay behind. So, Lord, I thank you for that. And I bless each and every one here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.